Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, let's pull up the screen here. All right, Nico has uh, been moved to number one. We also have a wide receiver that has absolutely skyrocketed. I mean, when I show you where he started and where he ended, it's incredible. And I can tell you for our coach, Josh Heupel, I'm going to show you his history with quarterbacks. And uh, just you wait what's going to happen with Nico. I'm telling you, you're going to be kind of – I'm not sure everybody realizes it. I know everybody knows Josh Heupel's a really good uh, coach, and he's kind of a quarterback whisperer and all that. But I'm going to show you proof positive of exactly what we're talking about when we say that because it's going to get you excited. I'll just go ahead and tell you this is going to be a fun show, and I'm going to enjoy making it. <laughs> And here it says, Nico stands atop the final 2023 recruiting rankings, number one. And he's the number one overall prospect in the class of 23, according to On3 Sports final rankings. And there he is, number one, NIL value, 1.2 million. It's not far off. <laughs> it says, high upside signal caller, best physical tools among quarterbacks. Stronger arms in the cycle, generating considerable velocity. Slender build with room to fill out. Boasts a quick, clean throwing motion despite longer arms. Bouncy fluid moves who doubles as a top volleyball player, which means he's a heck of an athlete. Those guys can jump. Plays in an offense in high school that's uh, skewed towards quick passes and screens. Who does that sound like? Can continue to improve his accuracy on downfield passes. Very good job taking care of the football. Just two interceptions in his first two varsity seasons, which is fantastic. And look at the difference in NIL money from a quarterback to a five-star edge. $1.2 million to $300,000. let us see what the other quarterback, Arch Manning. $3.6 million. <laughs> Whoa. That name helps. Omaha. 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 Wow. $3.6 mil. That's a good name. <laughs> Definitely. I can I, – I can see the value in it. I think we all can. But I'm not a bit surprised by that. I really thought he'd be the number one anyway, even though, you know, he was sitting at number two because he's the dual threat guy and he's number one for us. And the reason that I feel that way is that we need a running quarterback. We need a dual threat guy for our offense. So Arch was not a good fit for us. Even though I'd love to have had that name, you know, as our quarterback, that'd have been fun. I just really think Nico was the ideal fit for Josh Heupel in this offense. So for me, he's been the number one recruit the whole year. Now, some people are like, oh, we had to pay money and all that. Who cares? Who cares? Everybody's getting money that's a quarterback and a five-star. Look at that Rashada kid down there in Florida and that whole mess. But here's the way you need to look at it. When you have the number one dual-threat quarterback in the country, that allows you to recruit everywhere for wide receiver, offensive linemen, even defensive players. Like, you know, we just got the number one dual-threat quarterback in the country, you know, Nico. Does that interest you? Everybody cares about that that's in high school. They all do. And that's helped our recruiting all the way through. And it's going to continue to help us because now we're going after people like, like a five-star Wingo. And that guy, he knows Nico's there. And he's sitting there going, man, I could be there with the number one quarterback in the country. Gee, I wonder if that's interesting. And also you can tell him, oh, by the way, the last guy that was in your position and slot well, he just won the Blitnikoff Award, and he's going to the NFL. And before Josh Heupel arrived, he was not a guy anybody was even talking about. But Josh Heupel shows up. Guess what? And what do you think Heupel's going to do with the number one quarterback in the country? We're going to go through a little history of Josh Heupel here in just a little bit. But let me assure you, you're going to be pleased when you see it if you have never seen it. But we've got one other guy we need to talk about because here's the reality. Not only has he got these great recruits that he can really use for these future uh, prospects, he's doing the most important thing you can do in recruiting, and that's this. I'm sorry, winning. You starting to get the concept now? Oops, winning. That's right, winning. You need to win. It's one thing to sell the future. Oh, we're going to do this, and here's our vision, and everybody's got a vision, okay? I promise you, Billy Napier down in Florida is selling his vision, okay? But... When you go 11-2, and two, win the Orange Bowl and finish really top five, Alabama, forget you. You, you got beat one-on-one, -on -one, head to head, you're really sixth. But anyway, who cares? That's a really good selling point to go in there and, and show 11-2. and two. That's, you know, that really helps. 
and it just looks up from here, in my opinion. Yeah, we might have a little pullback this year. We'll see. I mean, we don't have Hen and Hooker, but when you see what this coach has done with quarterbacks, it's kind of shocking. It really is. He's been really consistent on having a great quarterback everywhere he's been. But before we go into that, I want to talk about this wide receiver that I've been really discussing for months. He was actually one of the first guys that I ever covered in on this channel, and it's Nathan Leacock, and he has jumped way up on the board. And he started out like 500th. And I'm going to show you a video from five months ago. I watched this uh, young man's uh, highlights in high school, and I was like, how could they possibly have him as a three-star? It didn't make any sense to me. Uh, he, I think this is a really good pickup. I think he's a strong three-star. They've got him listed as a three-star, but I think by the end of this year, you know, he's got a full season. I think he'll wind up being a four-star because you can just see his speed. And here they've got him listed at six foot four with the four four forty. So I mean, this kid's got he's got the wheels. And here you can watch him. We'll actually watch some highlights. And here's where he turns on the jets. And this fellow right here, he should have caught him. He had the momentum, but he just he couldn't keep up with him once he turned on the jets. And he clearly has a, another gear, which is what you've got to have in the, in the SEC. You've got to have two gears. Certainly the biggest guy out on the edges, that's for sure. But with the speed, he shouldn't have too much trouble. And here he just leaves them in his dust, no problem. They, they couldn't smell catching him. And then he just outruns everybody, which he does that all the time. And I know it's high school. I understand that. But, you know, you can clearly see he's got plenty of speed. And he's big. He's a big target. So I'm real pleased with this commitment. I think this guy could really stretch the field for us. And we need as much of that as we can get. We, speed is really critical in the SEC. Like I said, you need two gears. You need fast and super fast. And I believe <laughs> this young man's going to have that. And I really like this. Uh, I really like this commitment. I like it a lot. That's right. I like it a lot. <laughs> anyway, I think that was like my third or fourth video I'd ever made on the uh, Vols. So brought back some memories. But uh, yeah, that guy, he was not a three-star. You could so obviously see it. I was like, they had him like 500th in the country. And I'm, it's just like, he's, mm -mm, no. But anyway, wait till you see where he is now. And the story goes that he soars in final rankings from on three. And it says, on three, moved uh, Nathan Leacock into the top 50, okay, from 500th to top 50. And I watched him go from 500 to 350 to 200 to 100th, and now he's in the top 50. He's number 45. And we now have three players in the top 50. The number one player, then you got David Hobbs at number 20, and then you got number 45, uh, Nathan Leacock. So it's his big year powered his climb. He's long. He's athletic. He's very fast. He's got that great top end speed. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, real pleased with that. Look, he, he could be a fast Cedric Tillman. He could be a nightmare for folks. We're going to have so many good wide receivers. It's going to be ridiculous. And Josh Heupel and Nico are going to be magnets for that because, you know, if you want to win the Bolitnikoff Award, you might want to go to the same place where the guy just won it. Might be a good idea. <laughs> but now we're going to talk about Josh Heupel. Now, we've had people from Georgia and Alabama, you can't do that in the SEC, that's gimmicky. Anyway, <laughs> well, let me show you that the gimmick has worked everywhere it's been, including the SEC, not once, but twice. Let's take a little stroll down memory lane, shall we? Josh Heupel's quarterbacks by the numbers. And this was done by Volswire. And as you know, Heupel was the uh, Central Florida's head coach from 18 through 20. He was 28 and 8. Of course, he was the Missouri offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach in uh, 16 and 17. And in 2015, he was the offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach at Utah State. Here's a look at Heupel's quarterbacks by the numbers over all those years. Let's start with Dylan Gabriel at UCF. Now, if these numbers remind you of somebody, here they are. 248 of 413 for 3,500 yards. 32 touchdowns, four interceptions. Does that look a little bit like Hendon Hooker to you? Is that ringing any bells? Don't worry. We're going to keep going. 72 attempts, 169 yards rushing, two touchdowns, dual threat. Year before, as he was building him up, 3,600 yards, 
29 touchdowns, seven interceptions. So he got better. From 2019 to 2020, he got better. Once again, a sign of good coaching. And he ran for four touchdowns. Now let's go to another fella from UCF, Mackenzie Milton. This was in 2018. 2,600 yards, 25 touchdowns, six interceptions. Again, great numbers. Ran the ball for 307 yards and nine touchdowns. So he had 34 touchdowns, six interceptions. Remind you anybody? Now let's look at Drew Locke, who was at Missouri. He's in the NFL now. 3,900 yards, 44 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. And the year before, 3,400 yards, 23 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. So once again, he improved. Every single quarterback improves when they're with Josh Heupel. He gets them for one year, and they do well, like Hendon Hooker did. Had a real nice year last year. And then he was even better the next year. His quarterbacks don't throw interceptions. They throw a lot of touchdowns, and they run for touchdowns. And that's everywhere he's been. So there's your gimmicky offense. He's so gimmicky. It's funny how gimmicks just keep working for him. You know what it is? He's just lucky. He's just lucky. Now, he's always lucky, consistently lucky. So some people would call that skill, intelligence, you know, a great offensive mind. The elite, best of the best. We'll make it better. But some people like to use the word gimmicky because they're not really capable of thinking outside the box at all. It's just, it's either the old fashioned way or it's wrong. Okay, I have no problem with that. Stick with your old-fashioned ways. Run the ball, three yards, cloud of dust. Have at it. Knock yourself out. Enjoy losing. But for me, I think I'll just stick with Josh Heupel. And when it comes to his contract, I got one thing to say to University of Tennessee, and I'm sure they're working on it, but they need to do this. Desire. Settle! Settle, 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 settle! That's right. Settle, settle, settle. Get this done. Eight years, something like that. Eight, nine million bucks a year. Just get it done. I don't want to worry about it anymore. All right, folks, just wanted to cover all this good news. Nico to number one. Leacock jumps up to top 50 from 500 <laughs> over a year's time. And just you wait and see what Josh Heupel does with these guys. Man, oh, man. This is the most excited I've been about UT football in a long, long time. The last two years were awesome. The first year reminded me of the Atlanta Braves' worst to first, even though we were seven and six. It was just such a breath of fresh air to have an offensive mind in charge of that team and just the things he did and how much fun it was to watch. And then the next year, 11-2. and two, And even if we have a little pullback this year, it's not going to be much. And we may not at all. You never know. Milton might light it up. Everywhere he's been, his quarterbacks played well. And we saw a bunch of improvement in that Orange Bowl. So we'll see. But if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the balls in the SEC. And if you've not subscribed, I know a lot of you watch my videos, you don't subscribe. It's so easy. Boom, right there on the left. Cost you nothing. Helps me out, cost you nothing. Just boop, and you're done. And a video right here is one of my most recent ones, real popular. Check that out if you don't mind. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.